Today we have this really fascinating integral. It's the integral from zero to infinity of the square of the sine of tangent x divided by x squared. And integrals like these are pretty easily solvable using a shortcut that is a variation of Lobachevsky's integral formula, link in the description below. But that's no fun, isn't it? I mean, a really nice, a really satisfying solution development here involves a decomposition of the integral operator on the real line. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to define an integral i as the integral from negative to positive infinity of the square of the sine of tangent x divided by x squared dx. So yeah, it is your target integrand, but we're integrating it from negative to positive infinity instead of from zero to infinity. And the reason for this is pretty simple. If you replace x by negative x, then your integral i transforms into the integral from positive to negative infinity of the square of the sine of tangent negative x. Now, because the tangent function is an odd function, you can pop out a negative sign. And a similar case for the same, the same goes for the sine function. The sine function itself is an odd function. So again, you can pop out this negative sign, but remember we're squaring it. And you're dividing by x squared. So you have negative x squared and the differential element transforms into a negative dx. So the squares take care of these negative signs. You're still left with the square of the sine of tangent x in the numerator and x squared in the denominator. And to deal with this negative sign with the differential element, all we, all we have to do is switch up the limits of integration to make it look less weird and yield exactly the same structure as before. So we're integrating an even function on a symmetric interval. So instead of integrating from negative to positive infinity, we could just integrate from zero to infinity and double the result. And the integral that we have to double at the end is the target integral that I wrote out in the start. So that's pretty much what we're gonna do. We're gonna evaluate the integral i, and knowing that its result is twice the result of our target integral will just half the result. So we're gonna solve this integral using a decomposition of the integral operator on the real line. And what do I even mean by that? Well, what I'm trying to say is that you can write the integral from negative to positive infinity as an infinite series of integral operators. And to visualize that, pick one integral at the center of our attention. And a nice one would be the integral from negative pi by two to positive pi by two. And you can add integrals either side of it over intervals of length pi. So on the right, you can add the integral from pi by two to three pi by two. And on the left, you can add the integral from negative three pi by two to negative pi by two and so on and so forth. So we're writing out the integral from negative to positive infinity as a sum over all the integers n of the integrals from n minus one half of pi to n plus one half of pi. And this is pretty useful for our solution development. So under this deconstruction, we can write i as the sum over the integers n of the integrals from n minus one half of pi to n plus one half of pi of the square of the sine of the tangent of x divided by x squared dx. And now I'm gonna perform a substitution that's gonna make our lives much easier. And just let me write this in a better way. Yeah, I zoomed out, so that made my handwriting even worse. Anyway, so the substitution I'm talking about is letting x equal t plus n times pi. And what does this mean for the structure of our integral? Well, the differential element transforms pretty straightforwardly from dx to just dt, right? But what about the limits of integration? Well, as x approaches n minus one half of pi, this implies that t plus n times pi approaches n times pi minus pi by two, correct? 
So this implies that t must approach negative pi by 2 for the lower limit, and for the upper limit, we have the corresponding results with just a plus sign. So this implies that we can write i as the sum over the integers n. Oh, sorry about that. The sum over the integers n of the integrals from negative pi by 2 to positive pi by 2 of the square of the sine of the tangent of, again, my handwriting seems far more atrocious than usual, of the tangent of t plus n times pi. Now the tangent function is pi periodic, meaning that the tangent of t plus n times pi is equal to the tangent of t. So we can just replace all of this and write it as the tangent of t. We're dividing by, we were dividing by x squared, so we're now dividing by t plus n times pi squared, and the differential element is just a dt term. So switching up the order of the integration and the summation operators, we have the integral from negative to positive pi by 2 of the sum over n of the square of the sine of the tangent of t divided by t plus n times pi squared dt. And the squared sine term here is independent of the index variable n, so we can just slip it outside the summation operator and write this as the integral from negative pi by 2 to positive pi by 2 of sine squared tangent x times the sum over the integers n of 1 by t plus n times pi squared, and we're performing the integration with respect to t, of course. Okay, I know what you're thinking. It may seem like we're far worse than how we started, but that's not the case, because this infinite series is extremely cool. It's a really neat infinite series, and wait a second, wait a second we're integrating with respect to t, and we had the tangent of t here after the, after the transformation from the x world to the t world, of course. So yeah, my bad. Anyway, so I'm saying that this infinite series is really cool. Why? Because it's related to the series expansion for the cotangent function, where cotangent z can be written as the sum over the integers n of 1 by z plus n times pi. So differentiating with respect to z gives us the negative of the squared cosecant of z being equal to the sum over n of negative 1 by z plus n times pi squared. And the negative signs cancel out really nicely. And that means that your infinite series here converges to the squared cosecant of t, which is a very pleasant result because you have squared signs and all that. So this implies that we can write i as the integral from negative to positive pi by 2 of sine squared tangent t uh, times the squared cosecant, which of course is the reciprocal of the squared sine function. And we're going to expand using the squared tangent here. And why is that so? What benefit does that give us? Well, the squared tangent equals the squared sine times the squared, the squared secant. So the squared signs cancel out quite nicely, and you're left only with the squared secant term from here. So this implies that we can write i as the integral from negative pi by 2 to positive pi by 2 of sine squared tangent t divided by tangent squared t times the square of the secant of t dt. And now all we need to do is perform a substitution that is clear as day, and we have a very familiar result. We're going to let the tangent of t equal u, which implies that the squared secant of t dt equals du, and notice that we have the right structure in place for our transformation. And as t approaches negative pi by 2, u, which is the tangent of t, approaches negative infinity and the corresponding results for the upper limit. So this implies that i can be written as the integral from negative to positive infinity of the square of the sine of u divided by u squared du, which is a familiar Dirichlet integral that evaluates to pi. And remember that your integral i was actually twice your target integral. 
So finally, we can write the integral from zero to infinity of the square of the sine of tangent x divided by x squared dx being equal to pi by two, which is a pretty nice result indeed. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you, see you next time.